OK, now this program is going to look at fixed loops. So this is a fairly basic program. It's going to ask the user to enter a message, and it's going to display that message five times. So I've already got an input line up here that is going to ask the user to type in their message. And if I want to display it five times, what I can do is print message. And what I can do is copy and paste that line five times. So I'll just copy and paste two, three, four, five. So if I save that, and if I go over here and run my program, you see if I put this, no, sorry, this is my message, and press enter, you'll see that the program repeats that five times. However, if you look back at the code, that's not overly efficient. The same instruction is there five times. So, what we're going to do is use a fixed loop. So, for count out in range. Now, this variable here can be called anything, and we'll deal with that, this variable in, in further examples, but that could be called anything. And we want this to repeat five times. So, what this means is counter will be zero, then one, then two, then three, and then four, which will mean it's five times. Now, we need to put this message inside the loop. So what we do is use a tab key to make sure that that's indented and inside the loop, which means we now don't need these four extra print statements. So if I save the program and run it again, okay, sorry, I missed a colon there. And if we run that program now, and we put this is my message, you see that we get the same output, which is that message displayed five times. Now we can expand the program a little bit. We can say uh, repetitions, and we can say it's an int value, and we can say input, please enter the number of times to display it. And if I change this to repetitions uh, for counter in the range, Repetitions. Now, what's going to happen here? Again, we're in valid syntax error. So, what have we done here? Forgot to close a bracket. Okay. So, if I save that program and run it. Now, if we do this, is my message. And this time, I want it to split seven times. You'll see that two, four, six, and so we can use a fixed loop when we want to control the amount of times that. Uh, a particular loop happens and we know that in advance. In this example we've used a control, well, what's referred to as a control variable, in order to, to set the amount of times that that is being input. Okay, this time we're going to use a for loop to display the 8 times table. So we're going to display the first 10 items of the, the, the 8 times table. So we're going to use a fixed loop here. So we're going to say for counter in range Now, inside the loop, what we want to display is we actually want to display 1 times 10, then we want to display, uh, sorry, 1 times 8, then next time we want to display 2 times 8, and so on and so on and so on. So, what we're going to use is this counter variable, because this counter variable starts at 0 and goes all the way up to 10. So, if I just tell it to print, uh, counter times 8. And it'll do this 10 times. So let's just run that program and see what we get. So if we run that program, you see that the first time we're getting is 0. And it's only got up to 72, which is 9 times 8. And that's because counter starts at 0. Now you've got two options here. You can either add 1 to the counter, or you can tell it to start and go like that. Now that I might actually make the loop a little bit easier to read. You see it goes up to 8, or we could have added 1 onto the counter there. But let's just stick with that at the minute. So, however, now what I want to do is I want to adapt it so that it says 1 times 8 is 8. So I'm going to clone this line, just so we can refer to the code above it. And what we're going to print is, we're going to say counter, and we are going to then say, um, we're going to concatenate, we're going to concatenate the word multiplied, and then we actually want to display the number 8, so we're going to say that 
something, whatever the counter variable is, multiplied by 8 is fairly fixed, so we know that. And then we actually just want to display that line there. Now that won't be a string, so we just need to make it a string. And I'll need to put a space there. So if we just run this, and I'll take that line away there. So unsupported type, because what have I done? Because that isn't a string. So if we just turn that into a string as well. Now I should have perhaps put an equals in there, but other than that, oops. Okay, if I just take that mistype away. So what I want to do now is I want to adapt this program so that I can ask, ask which times table I want to display. So we're going to need to ask a user which table to display. So we're going to say times table equals int input please enter this table to display. Close the speech marks, close the bracket. Now what we can say is rather than multiplying it by 8, we're going to say multiply it by whatever this thing called the times table is. And rather than counter times 8, it's going to be counter times times table. So if we run this program now, so let's just go for 5. Okay, it's not too happy about something because because we forgot that times table is not a string, so we'll just convert it to a string there. So if we just rerun that, okay, we need to save it. Okay. And it will display this time, I'll put number 5. And you'll see that I get my 5 times table this time. 